everyone to the Sawyer Station, Eddie out. My name is Zach and today we're going to talk a little bit about just um, how you can prepare yourself for the season, getting ready and um, taking care of your paddling and oars. As always, we do want to mention to you that uh, we do have Instant Messenger on the website. So if you have any kind of questions, you definitely can uh, shoot us at a text there and we'll get right back to you on that. Definitely during, uh, during business hours. We got a couple folks monitoring that all the time. So please engage with the Instant Messenger on the website. That'll get your questions answered sooner than later and we'll help you get on your way. Um, also as a great reminder is we do have the quick ship feature on our website. And if you haven't checked out the quick ship, I do recommend doing that because there's actually a lot of updated items that are on the quick ship. So if you've looked at the quick ship maybe a while ago, you might want to check back on those updated items because there's new items that are on the quick ships as well. Also, the sales page on our website is also getting new items as well. We do have some stuff that has been ordered and then canceled out or specialty stuff. And um, right now we've got some, some uh, dual band manas on there. You know, some of you have been looking for those. And then also a uh, pretty good selection of utility ores that have slight cosmetic blemishes on it. So check those things out and uh, get yourself set up for the season. Now, as far as a lot of us are maybe just getting ready to get out on the season, Memorial Day weekend's coming up, that's kind of the kickoff. And maybe you haven't pulled all your gear out yet. So a couple things you can do is one, you do wanna take care of your oars. And one of the number one products that you can use on almost every Sawyer product is putting a fresh coat of varnish on it. And so what we recommend is the Miller Spar Varnish. It's on our do-it-yourself page. And the Miller Spar Varnish is definitely a, uh, a must for all Sawyer product. This Spar Varnish is actually formulated just for us. And it's also put into the pint and quart containers just for us. Now also on the do-it-yourself page, there is a how-to link page. If you click on that, we have several videos on how-tos and you can get a detailed video of how to varnish, how to rope wrap and that kind of thing. So a couple of things to keep in mind. When you're actually looking to varnish products, people ask us, what, what products, you know, do I put varnish on? And the answer is almost everything that is a Sawyer product. So the only things that you don't wanna put varnish on are Duramax blades and composite shafts. Other than that, you wanna put a nice fresh coat of varnish on it. So that means that your Dynalite blade, your VLAM blades, your Ash Pro blades, your Furlam blades, all of the blades that have either a wood finish on them or a carbon fiber fiberglass finish on them, they really would benefit by a fresh coat of varnish. And we recommend every couple seasons. So most folks do this before they put their stuff away, but we're kind of reminding you if you didn't do it when you put your stuff away, maybe you should do that now. And a um, couple key things to remember when you're Revarnishing your gear. First of all, you're going to need a couple days to do it, at least two or three days. And you need a warm, dry environment to actually cure the varnish. So it is kind of stinky. It will stink up your area. So, you know, you don't want to do it in the living room. But, um, you know, a lot of folks have an outdoor garage or, or an outdoor shed. That is a perfect place to revarnish your oars and oar blades. And a couple of reminders on it is that we do also sell kits, but if you don't buy the kit from us, the things that you do want to have are some definitely some couple different grades of sandpaper. So you can actually kind of buff out the area, clean up your, your blade or your oar shaft. If you, um, if you have some shrink wrap, you want to isolate like the rope wrap and the stop off your oar, so you don't wanna, you don't wanna put varnish over that. You wanna isolate your grip, that kind of thing. But also, you know, so a couple different 
types of sandpaper. So in our kit, just for example, we have 80 grit, 120 grit, and 320 grit, and then also a just a Brillo pad. So kind of those are general things you can get at your general hardware store, and you can put that together yourself. Another thing to keep in mind is that if you are revarnishing your ores or your blades, two coats is what you want to put on your on your ores or your blades. So you have to prep it, go ahead and do your first coat. It's going to soak that in. It's really going to take that in. Then you want to buff it out again and put your second coat. That right there already takes two days of cure time. So right there, you're going to get to, that's where your three days of uh, overall project time are coming in. So if you have any questions on that, you click on the instant messenger and uh, shoot us a question or uh, just look at our website on the how to watch that video on how to varnish. So hopefully that's helpful. Now, another thing that we do get a question on is just replacement grips. So the replacement grips are something that we put out, send out a lot. You know, if your grip comes off your, off your, um, off your oar, or if your oar handle gets smashed on something, you're gonna damage your grip and that's a real easy repair. It's just the foam grips are sold separately. You can do them indexed or regular. There's a video to watch for putting the grips on, but a couple key things on putting on grips is one, if you're gonna revarnish your oars, it's a great time to actually change out your grips. Then you don't have to worry about isolating the grip and not getting varnish on it. Just slice the grip off, revarnish that whole area, and then put a new grip on after you're done varnishing. A couple of things that you'll notice in the video, the video is a little long, it does go into depth about how to put grips on. Key things with grips, one, heat is your friend. You need to heat up the grip so you can slip it on to, to the ore handle. And then also aerosol hairspray. Who knew aerosol hairspray is the key ingredients to putting on grips. What it does is you spray the aerosol hairspray on the wood and it will work as a lubricant when you're putting the grip on and then an adhesive once the grip is in place. So. Use a little heat and some aerosol hairspray. You get your grips put on and get ready to get out on the water. So keep that in mind. Now, I also want to talk a little bit about just some of the things that you can do to prep revarnishing your oars. And that is just some, some at home do it yourself repairs. Um, a lot of times, when you start inspecting your oars, you're going to notice that you have some divots and dings. If there's divots in the wood and wood is actually exposed, that's an area you want to definitely sand out and get some fresh varnish over it. If it's a pretty strong divot, then you can use something like a uh, like quick fair putty, any kind of epoxy putty. That's going to help you fill those, fill up those little gaps, and that will help just kind of smooth that out. Then you sand that over, put your varnish on there, and in in some of our composites. If you're looking at uh, your Dynalite blades or your, your pro tip on your ash blade, you may notice that there's a little lip that has come up there or you've taken an impact on the side of the blade and you've got a little separation on the edge of the blade. Quick repair that's gonna give you long life is get just some two-part marine epoxy. Systems 3 is what we recommend. We sell these kits here. Get yourself some two-part marine epoxy, do a thorough inspection of your blade, epoxy down any little parts that are, that are raised up or look like rough spots. Let that cure for 12 hours in a nice dry, warm in place, then sand that out, then put your re-varnish on. So very important that you basically kind of do all your prep work. The varnish is like the last piece. Now we do have folks that run square tops. Square tops are one of our most popular ores. As a general rule, that upper square of the square top is where the wood is really exposed. So we have folks that actually just re-varnish that every year. Every season start off with a fresh coat of varnish on the, on the square top. But that entire ore, when it is out of the factory, 
is varnished. So if you are actually working on your square tops and you've only been varnishing the square, go ahead and actually take that time, isolate the rope wrap and varnish the entire thing. The varnish that we have formulated, this Miller varnish that we have formulated is literally the highest UV protection that you can find on the market for our ores. It is blended for us. It's what your ores came with when they left the factory. So you're gonna get the best adhesion to the chemicals when you're trying to refinish. So we recommend that Miller Spar Varnish. Now, one other thing that I'd like to go over is that a lot of you are running composite ores. That's great. You don't have to do any varnishing on the, on the composites. If your ores are getting really old, we do recommend that you isolate your grip, cut your grip off and re-varnish your handles. Because even though you've got composite shafts, if they're Sawyers, you've got wooden handles. And so wooden handles can actually get abused and, and degrade in the, in the elements. You wanna do a quick buff on those and put a fresh coat of varnish on your handles, then slip on the grip and you've got a new set of handles, okay? Now, also on the composites, there's a couple things you wanna keep in mind. And if you don't have it already, you should definitely have a tight set kit in your repair kit. And I recommend if you're purchasing any composite ore from us with a composite ore blade, get yourself a tight set kit at the get go. Comes with two tight set buttons and a tool. Many of you have maybe stripped out the tight set button because you used the wrong tool. Screwdriver is not a good idea. You need this really blunt, flat screw cert so you can use that on the tight set button. So those are a couple of repair tips and how-to tips. Please check out our do-it-yourself page. Check out the videos. If it's beautiful and sunny, get out on the water. If it's rainy and nasty, check out one of our videos and educate yourself. Hope everybody has a great weekend and we'll see you on the river.